Welcome back to another episode of Producer Grind Podcast. Carrington and JB with me. Yo. Yo. We got the legend S1 in the building, man. What up, what up, what up? The three-time Grammy winner, man. Man, it's Three been a blessing. Hell yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's out here, man. You're on the run, you know, promoting your brand new book, Pray, Focus, Plan, Execute. Yeah. You said it took you about two, three years to write this. Yeah, it took me about two and a half years to write, man. And like I say, the, that two and a half years, it wasn't straight through. Um, it was it was a really hard process to to get to the 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 completion of this book mm-hmm. is because um, during the process of writing, you know, I would have these terrifying moments of, man, do I really want to put this out here? Just mm-hmm. showcasing my insecurities and fears yeah, and yeah, doubts yeah. and mm-hmm. things. But I was always reminded, like, it's not about me. Mm-hmm. It's about me being able to fulfill my purpose and that's to inspire and impact others. So the only way I can do that is to be able to show people my journey and what I went through and how mm-hmm. I overcame those things to get to where I was, where I am today. Fire, fire. No, nah, man, I'm, I'm a big book guy and I think it's dope. Like, I think there should be, you know, more books written by producers right. and just for producers and stuff. So, man, definitely, I appreciate big salute that. to you. I, I, I'm, I'm a big reader on these kind of books. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, I mean, that this was one of the things like on my come up and as I was going through my journey of pursuing my dreams, <clears throat> I would always buy like magazines, like the Scratch okay. Scratch mm-hmm. magazine, yeah, yeah. Source, mm-hmm. and read people's stories. Like, how do they get this joint? Or how do they? And that it kept me. That gave me hope, mm-hmm. and it kept me inspired and right. motivated. So, you know, I was like, what better way to um, than to inspire to tell my story and let people know what I've been through to get to where I am today? Definitely. Yeah, I definitely. think for any yeah. producer, like honestly, like reading this, it was kind of crazy. It's like, wow, it's like you're really relating to someone that actually is doing what you're doing, and then to see like how you're come up. And like, <clears throat> it really did unlock possibilities for any, like anyone that reads this. Like you could see like, wow, if it worked for him, it could really work for Man, me. Man, mm-hmm. I'm glad you said, and that's what, that's a lot of the feedback that I've been getting is people will hit me up and be like, yo, chapter 14, that's where I'm at right mm-hmm. now. Or chapter 10, like that, that really inspired me because I was dealing with the same thing, mm-hmm. you know, so. I, oh, you I'm, mean I'm relating saying, it to yeah, their life. It to that life. Yeah, yeah, relating it to that life. Yeah, You know, so I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the, the how it's being effect, how it's affecting people. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yes, I mean, for everyone at home, man, we got to we'll throw a link in the description. Definitely go check it out. Yes, um, maybe maybe we could do like a giveaway or something too. Absolutely. That'd be dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, Let's do but, it. but man, like one of the things like, the cr- one of the craziest parts to me about this book oh, yeah. is freaking the discography. <laughs> bro, what? <laughs> Four or five pages bro, of come on records. Now. Like, yo, let, I mean, I got to <laughs> rattle a couple of these off. You know what I mean? Like we got, and you start with the most recent. So, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, and you're going back to, when was your first one? Uh, probably like when I started my group, Strange Fruit Project. Yeah. Like you know? 2002. Yeah, so like yeah. 2002. Yeah. And now still, you know, working with the baby, Block Boy JB, Eminem. Uh, Hold up, Dilly. It's just crazy. Let's get to the real size. <laughs> Man said Madonna on here. Madonna yeah. credits. Kanye West Power. That's one of your biggest, yeah, right? Yeah, that's, that's, that was actually my... Um, like I'll call it my life changing moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that kind of yeah. took my career to the next level. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about that. Like, what 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 was it like? Like before that and leading up to that moment. Uh, well, before that, it was just like a a a, a guy that had a dream or a, a boy that had a dream of pursuing music and trying to figure out how to get to where I I saw myself. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, it was it had a lot to do with just me having vision, but at the same time, this was the period like this 13 or 14 years was a period of me planting a lot of seeds and taking a lot of actions. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the difference between um, someone that just has a dream and the person that actually accomplishes a dream that Mm -hmm. it's the in between of taking the action. And uh, there were a lot of small successes within that 13 years that I was having that was eventually like getting me to the next phase or the next step in my life. It was just, everything was a stepping stone, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And uh, another thing that was big for me is just the planting the seeds, man. Mm -hmm. Um, There were moments to where, for instance, um, and I talk about it in the book, um, you know, just me uh, creating my group, Strange Fruit Project, and putting that project out with no expectation. Right. And seeing like it just travel over time, of course, it wasn't nothing just happened over, that happened overnight, but seeing how that spread over time and then eventually end up here and then caught the attention of Quest Love, who mm-hmm. became mm-hmm. of Quest Love of the Roots, who right, became right. a big fan. And he passed it on to Erica Badu right. and she calls me out the blue <laughs> one day and then we start working together. So, you know, just planting seeds like that. And then also I mentioned in the book, um, a situation where I got to a point where it's like, okay, I see how this works. Like, 
if I plant the seed or if I if I take action on something, there's a possibility that it can happen now or that it can come true. Right. But if I sit back and don't, there's a po- there's a guarantee that it'll never happen. Right. You right. know, so it's just like getting these de- developing these concepts over time of like, okay. I can start just making sure every day that I'm contributing it toward, towards where I'm trying to go and make sure I'm doing that every day and just doing it over and over and over, yeah. you know, to something eventually starts come back, let's, coming let's, back. I mean, I definitely want to continue the story, but let's let's relate this to producers, you know, in, in 2019 or 2020 mm-hmm. now. What are some of these, maybe guys that have no connections, just kind of starting out, what are some seeds that they can start planting immediately? Uh, one of the things that I would say is just building relationships. I think that's a big part of it, but not to a point to where you you're um, stalking people, mm. but getting to like different networking events and um, and just 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 uh, connecting with people. Mm. I think that's a big part of it. And then and then you don't even have to be at events now. You can go in different, you know, uh, different sites and and connect with people online through social media now. You know, so it's just connecting with people and building a good rapport with them. And then at some point. You know, uh, after you start building a relationship, you know, you can eventually start working with them and and exchanging, whether it's sample packs mm-hmm. or, or doing little uh, little uh, tasks for them here and there. Mm-hmm. And that eventually leads over time to things. I think I think right now people are looking to like, how can I get my first place like right now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. instead of wanting to um, do it over a period of time and re- building something real with people. Yeah. Right. I think one of the things that really <clears throat> helped out and that I took notice of was just forming the benefits of forming a group. And mm-hmm. I think that's something that producers in 2019, I don't know if we necessarily like focus on that enough, or maybe that's like an old school method, but I think mm-hmm. that's something that's still relevant. Mm-hmm. I'd love to hear your perspective on it too. Yeah, I I, I totally agree. Um, having a team and other like, like-minded individuals around me was a big, um, it, it was, it was a, a, a way to, actually be able to not be in it myself. And then one, uh, a good thing is that we were always like encouraging each other. Right. And it was a great support team. And I think that's important is having that support team that not only are you, you guys have the same vision in mind and the same goals, but at the same time, like as you're having these different moments of, of failure or disappointment or being discouraged, like you Mm -hmm. can actually be able to you know, encourage somebody, uh, you know, encourage your, 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 your guy. Right. Or, mm-hmm. you know, I think that's so important. And th- those, those encouraging moments are what take us through those hard, be able to push through those hard times and get to wherever we're trying to get to the right. conference. So I think that's, that's really what I gained from just having just like-minded, good spirited individuals around. Cause yeah. that energy mm-hmm. is everything. Mm-hmm. That good energy. Yeah. And one thing too, like, I think like instead of just starting off, just, you know, trying to chase placements and kind of just be on your, be on your own, like working with guys that are at the same level as you on the artist and producer side and really building your personal brand, you know what I mean? Like putting out records, like on Spotify, putting your name on it too, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You know, working playlists and kind of just building your name up. Mm -hmm. Um, What are some networking like techniques that you see or networking failures that you see producers do on you know social media or just in, in real life too? um the the worst is spamming <laughs> mm, <laughs> i knew we were gonna get there i hate to get an email um a producer sending loops and they don't even introduce themselves like there's not it's, even an introduction it's just like the just loops, the files mm, you know yeah. and i think that's the easiest way to get uh automatic delete <laughs> yeah <laughs> or like people like like what how do you feel about like the I'm a 16 year old producer comment <laughs> or like the, you know what I mean? Just I'm the um, hardest out kind of thing. It, it depends on what comes after that. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it depends on what comes after that. Yeah. You know, cause every now and then I'll, I'll get in my DMS and look at stuff, but usually it's the same approach. So it's like start being a little bit more unique in your approach and a little bit more authentic in mm-hmm. your approach. Mm-hmm. I think that's the, probably the difference between, um, you know, how you approach someone. Yeah. I think definitely like just, Coming with value first, too, versus value, like, man, so important. Bring your value even before a value exchange. Like, yo, I'll do this in exchange for this. Just, I'll do this. Mm-hmm. I'll do this. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Here, do this. Use this. Type, yep. type of shit. Um, what about what about in person? What um, are some flaws and what are some techniques that you see? Well, not necessarily techniques, but what do you see work and what do you see don't work? What doesn't work? Um, I think Dylan said it is just being able, like, how can you add value to something? Mm-hmm. And um, you know, for for producers that's coming up, like, you got to realize that. You know, in most cases, you're you're looking to collaborate or 
excuse me, collaborate or, or get with a producer that's on a, a different level, mm-hmm. you know, uh, status wise or career wise. But it's like, what, what should be the reason that they pull you in on something? Right. So that that's what you got to decide. Like, how can you add value of something that they don't have mm-hmm. already? And and add be able to add that value to be able to 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 build. And then once you're in there, then that's 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 your learning and your boot camp and right. you know. And then from there, you're able to build your own from that. And I think a lot of people will cross that too. It's like trying to get in, but then trying to build their own when they supposed to be this supposed to be the focus for this moment. Mm-hmm. You know. So. Oh, let's not let's not <laughs> brush over that that boot camp moment. Go ahead, like let's expand on that because I think the boot camp phase. You can want to rush it to get to oh, the opportunity wow. place. I always say, like, I like it took me about 13, 14 years for me of of producing and, uh, um, you know, going really going hard at my craft and my gift uh, to my life changing moment. Mm. I always say if it would have happened five years later, a lot of those uh, placements in my discography wouldn't exist mm. because there was a lot of things I was learning within that 13 year span mm-hmm. that I needed to be able to um, to really stretch that out. You know, when that moment happened, I was able to main, not only maintain it, but also like multiply a lot of those because of the things mm-hmm. that I learned within that, that span. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think it's important to uh, be able to learn and because when you're learning and you're going through these things, not only are you you growing, like you're evolving mm. as a producer and a person, you know, so these little key things that you're learning along the way, you're able to use those when that big thing happens for you and, you, and you're able to use those little things to get you to the next step and phase. Mm. How did you even get started? Like, what were you in? What, what equipment were you using when you started? Oh, man, my, my first piece of equipment wasn't even like a, a, um, a production hardware. It was uh, basically just a, a Gemini mixer with a six second sample mm-hmm. on it that my, my pops had bought me um, because I couldn't afford like a MPC 2000 or SP 1200 mm-hmm. at the time. So it was mm-hmm. like getting this mixer and, you know, sampling things in that and using my, my dad's dual cassette player and just doing overdubs to mm-hmm. create things. And then from there, I eventually was able to get me a, um, this little uh, Elise's drum machine. Mm. And was just making little drum patterns on there, and then it just kept progressing. Then I started using my friend's SP twelve hundred, and I saw I was over there every day learning that, and that was probably the first uh, real piece of gear that I started using the SP twelve hundred. You know, and just was doing all my stuff on there until I was able to 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 buy my own equipment. Mm. And yeah, let's continue down the the, the path to to power. No pun intended. Uh, but the, 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 <laughs> the song power, um, you said, sort of came from a relationship with with Quest Love. That's how it kind of started. Or well, well, the the power situation came from. Uh, so, for instance, I was working with uh, y'all. Y'all for me with the hip hop group Little Brother. No. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Little Brother is a, a a super dope group from North Carolina, and it's three members. It's um, it's Fonte, Poo, a, a rapper Poo. And then the producer's Ninth Wonder. Y'all familiar with Ninth yeah, Wonder? Yeah, okay, yeah, so that was, mm-hmm. that was, he was the producer of that group. Gotcha. Uh, so I started working with them and then my relationship with Fonte led me to working with um, Ron Fess. And you guys familiar with Ron Fess? Yeah. Ron Fess is basically, he's a prolific songwriter. He mm. co-wrote Jesus Walks with Kanye. Mm, mm, and uh, he also co-wrote like Glory with, um, and won an Academy Award with mm. Common and John Legend for writing that song. Mm. So I started working with him and there was a certain situation during working with him of, you know, he hit, I sent him some beats. He hit me up and he was like, yo, S, I, I'm loving these beats you sent me. I want to use four of them, but I'm at the end of my budget. Can you, uh, can I pay you for two and you give me the other two? Mm. And it was that moment to where I was like, yeah, man, just pay me for those two and I'll just give you these other two. I'm not tripping. You know, I'm a big fan of your work and I'm just as a producer at that moment trying to get my name out anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I wound up doing that. So was that uh that was a a no brainer for you or it was you? a it was a no brainer. It okay. was a it was a no brainer. Um and after I did that, um I did it with no expectation either. It was like, let me just do it and then move on to the next yeah, thing. Yeah. And uh a couple of months later he calls me and he's like, Yo, S, I'm gonna be in the studio with Kanye send me some joints over. And if I get the opportunity, I'm going to try to play them for him. So yeah. I was like, cool. So I sent it to him and didn't hear from him for like two weeks. So at that moment, I'm already like, uh, 
either one Kanye didn't like what he what he played or he didn't get to play him for Kanye. Mm-hmm. And at that moment too, I was used to sending people stuff and nothing coming from it. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, so it was just one of those just just the repeated cycle mm-hmm. of that. Uh but then um like I say 2 weeks later, I get a text on my phone and all the text says is, "Yo, Kanye is loving your stuff. He just said he's about to change your life." Mm. So I'm reading this text like, yo, this is, what does this mean? This is crazy. Yeah. You know, and then a couple of days later, I get an email from Don C, who was managing Kanye at the time. And it was like, uh, uh, S1, get to the airport. Your flight for Hawaii uh, leaves in a, in a few hours. Damn, mm-hmm. just like that. Just like that. Damn. Yeah. And, and at that point, everything just started like moving fast. So, mm-hmm. To a point where I was on that flight, like, man, what is going on? Yeah. <laughs> Like and what's about to, what's about to go down? <laughs> so as far as that beat, I know like Kanye's camp, they're big on like taking taking beats and adding their twist to it. Mm-hmm. How what was that process like, and how different was your original version between from the final version? Uh, so my original version is pretty much uh, I did the drums. Okay, I did the sample the uh, uh, mm-hmm. so the chant sample, um, and then like the siren that's in it. Kanye took that and. And there were and there were so many different versions of power. Like mm. it went through so many different phases. Uh, when he when I first got to Hawaii and he played me the first version, it was different verses. It was different chords. Mm. It was um, the instrumentation was less. It was very it was very like stripped down and just raw. Mm. Um, but uh, to, to get back to that, he was able to like really dissect it. And of course, Mike Dean came in and added some keys and Jeff Basker, who was amazing as well. You know, those two two guys are just legendary in what yeah. they do. Hell they yeah. came in, added they sauce to it. And um, Kanye is just really good at getting the best of the best to help him fulfill his vision. Mm. You know, and that's what I learned. Like, I was, I was signed to Kanye for about three years, so I was always with him. And that's the one thing I picked up is, like, no matter who's in the room, he can, he, he, he will have, he would have, um, a few producers in the room working on the same joint. And at the end of the day, who, no matter who you were, if, if it was best for the song, then your part was going to make the song. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you, do you consider that like real producing or something? Like when you can kind of like mastermind? Absol- absolutely. Because it's like, because I, I think at that moment, it, it becomes less about you. Mm. And it becomes more about the song, mm. you know, and um, his, his intent was always just about the song, like who can add value to this to make it the best that it can possibly be, mm. you know, and, and that's what he was great at. It probably, his ear. It, it probably wasn't like, yeah, I could bring S1 in, but I do want majority of the publishing. So right. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, right. <laughs> uh, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, like kind of like instead of thinking greedy, like oh, I want to do this all on my own, mm-hmm. bringing in other bringing you know, in other people. Yeah. And then for, and then like at that moment for him to even use that uh, with me being practically a no name to him, you know, um, I think that was, that meant everything. Cause it's like, man, I don't like, I have, I mean, I, he's in the room with Timbaland and Mike Dean and Swiss and all these other people. Um, and it's like, no, nah, this guy that I never heard of because I see, I have a vision for this. I'm going to use this. I think mm. that's, I think that's, that's mind blowing when mm. you look at it. Why well, do you, oh, no, I was, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to ask, why do you think Kanye was able to think bigger than just like the, yeah, I don't want to bring him in for the publishing. Like, why is that? Uh, In what, in what sense? Like, that's just counterintuitive. Well, like, because you, you saying like how we talk to producers, like they may like, nah, I don't use loops. I, I want to yeah, do like, it on I'm, my, I'm on trying my to get own. The publishing, yeah, like, I'm why? To do it on why my is own. it that Kanye? You would think out of everybody, be like, not saying like uh, making assumptions for him, but why do you think he he able he's able to see the value in not thinking the that bigger way? picture, exactly. the, bigger, the bigger picture? I don't know, man. I think it's just I think when he because the first thing he told me when. I, I got to Hawaii and went in the studio and it was him and Fess. And the first thing he said, he was like, man, I'm loving all your beats you sent. They making me want to rap again. Mm. You know, so I think at that moment in his in his career and in his life, like he was looking for that next inspiration, mm. you know, and the, what, whatever was going to inspire him to 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 go to his next level or mm. what he or wherever he was in his, his the point of his career in his life. So I think that that trumped anything and everything. Um, just him being able to uh, gain that inspiration from that that batch that was sent. Now, prior to that phone call, 
and, you know, finding out that Kanye was loving your stuff. What was your life looking like? I know you're married with kids and stuff mm-hmm. now. What was it like back then? Um, it it was cool. Um, like I said, I was, I'm just a super hard worker, so I was working. Uh, I had quit my job two weeks prior, I mean, two weeks, two months. No, two years prior to that situation. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, two months, that don't sound right. <laughs> yeah, I had quit my my corporate job two years prior to that situation. So it was a lot of ups and downs. You know, you have good months. I was selling beats like two, three, four, five hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. You know, so just the whatever I could do to 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 make rent. Um, and I have some good months, and then I have some months to where it's like, oh, like, did I do a the right thing quitting. Yeah, yeah, you know, you yeah, have those months. Those but jobs. then but then my wife was very supportive too. So mm. that played a lot, you know, just her support and being able to like get me through those rough moments, encourage me through those rough moments. Mm. And ha- also have a vision of, yes, you, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Like I really believe this is what you're supposed to be doing full time. So no matter what we're going through, like I'm gonna be here to push through. Like that yeah, was man. everything for me. That was my extra battery in my back. Yeah. To get me to that next that next I had phase. A question. I had a question for you. Mm-hmm. So for for producers in 2020, when do you think is a good time for them to quit their job? That's a that's a great question. So I, I think, and that's one thing, like in the book, I, I speak on me quitting my job, but it wasn't just me just being like, okay, I'm just going to quit tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It was putting a plan in place. That's Mm -hmm. why I say pray, Mm -hmm. focus, plan, execute. Like Mm -hmm. everything like has to be some type of plan. You don't have to fully plan out, but have Mm -hmm. at least a a, a direction or or something kind of in stone of what you're going to do. You know, and with me, it was a matter of, okay, this is what I want to do. I'm, I, I wanted, I'm ready to get rid of my, my get rid of, uh, come away from my corporate job. So mm-hmm. me and my wife was like, okay, once she believed and was like, yeah, I truly believe you should be doing this as well. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. let's take the next tix, 10 months and um, let's put some things in order. So for that 10 months, we started paying bills off. Um, we started saving money. We started doing away with the luxury things like cable. We cut our cable off and all mm-hmm. these extra little things that we could do to be able to um, you know, use that cash for other things. Yeah. Uh, and we was planning. So when that 10 month came, that uh, 10 month period came, it was like, okay, now we're ready for you to, to for mm. you to be able to come off your job. And that's what I did, mm. you know, but there was some prep, a lot of preparation involved and sacrifice that we had to, to, um, to really uh, focus on prior to me coming mm. off my job. Yeah. It sounds like you really have a real good communication and, uh, your wife is, has a real like understanding and kind of like motivate you. What would you say to like, what are some of the benefits and, and how could it uh, be almost non-beneficial to, to have a full-time relationship while pursuing this kind of career? Mm-hmm. Um, it just depends on, uh, <laughs> it depends on you, the, the relationship. Yeah. You know, um, I, I mean, just think, I, 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 I think sometime about if my wife wasn't in agreement with me, mm-hmm. like how would things have turned out? Yeah, you know. So I think it just it just really boils down to the individual relationship, and mm-hmm. you know, uh, do you got are you guys going in the same direction? How's the support? Do you support her? Does he does she support you and what you do and see the same vision? Can she see, you know, your, your the possibilities of what it could be? Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it's the it's what what the possibilities are because mm-hmm. we have no idea of when things are gonna happen or what's going to happen from it. But if we can see it, we know that there's a possibility that things can come from it. Right, right. You know, so. For any of uh, the our audience that may have a relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, what are some ways a husband can encourage his wife or a boyfriend can encourage mm-hmm. his girlfriend to be able to, like, how could they support each other? What does the other person no, I, need in order to make I the get, vision I come fast? So, so when my wife and I started dating, um, it was... It was more of like she was competing against my my production or my my mm. gift. Mm. You know, when we got married, it's like it's like okay, how can I involve her more to make my dream, make her feel a part of this dream, as opposed to her competing with my dream, mm. right? You know, so it mm. was it was a lot on my part to make her feel like okay, I need to incorporate her more, I need to involve her more, mm. and make her feel like a part of dream. And then when I did that. I could see she started to get more excited. Like, right. hey, I'm a part of this too. And I, I not only am I, am I supporting, but I feel like this is 
you know, mm. I could be able puzzle. to, yeah, I could be able to be a part of sculpting this as well. Yeah. Right. And I think that changed everything. Mm. Mm. What are some of the things like that you would recommend? Like, is it, would it be so like answering emails kind of like almost like, yep. Yeah. So with, with my, my wife's gift is being able to organize, mm. you know, so she's great at organizing and taking, you know, us being creatives, we're all, all over the place most of the time. Yeah. And she's able to take all these things and be able to like put them in line for them for it to make mm. sense to me. Mm-hmm. And for and then not only that, but uh, in doing that, you you able to maximize your opportunities and maximize your time even more. Mm. You know, just by having that. So it was just uh, me being able to um, have her use her gift mm. to to make my whole foundation and and, and structure of things stronger. Mm. Now, in a in like an unhealthy relationship, right, where you're bringing your wife in, your girlfriend in to help you, there could be, especially if you're a man, there could be like a power struggle. Or you could feel like you're above here and then they're my assistant. How do you make sure that it's level? Like for someone that's like, that has the vision, is trying to build it, how do they look at the other person as an equal, an equal valuable piece? It's not like, I'm the leader. You just got to help me. How do I look at them? Like, I can't accomplish this without you. Did you ever face that hurdle? No, I I never really faced, faced that hurdle because once I started involving her, you know, she started to feel, I mean, just feel like she's a part of it, mm-hmm. you know? So it never was a, a point to where I felt, um, I felt like superior, mm-hmm. you know, in situation and then, and then vice versa, because mm-hmm. at that point, you know, she was still working her corporate job, right. you know, and she was making more than me, right. you know, w- with me pursuing his dreams. Yeah, so she right. didn't make me feel lower than what I was at the at the point with her making more income than I was making. Because that, yeah, could, be, that could be the downfall yeah. to a yeah. relationship. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely, yeah. that could be. Mm. Yep. Mm. So I want to talk about some advice you could give to producers that are in that beginning phase, you know, no placements yet or anything about who and how they're spending their time with. Um, you know, like I, I know a lot of guys that, you know, say they're chasing a goal, say they're chasing something, but you look at how they spend their time and majority of it kind of might be hanging around with the wrong people doing the wrong things. What, would, what kind of advice would you give? Um, I would just say um, show up every day and make sure that every day you're maximizing every hour of your day. You know, it's very important to prioritize. You know, uh, a lot of people are. Uh, busy but they're not productive Mm -hmm. you know so it's Mm -hmm. like it's like really like have having this reassess reassessment moment to reassess yourself to be like okay everything i'm doing every day what's what's the important things that's getting me closer to where i need to be right Mm -hmm. you know and then eliminating the things that's not you know and then once you do that then i think that's when you become productive instead of just being busy Mm -hmm. you know but you have to prioritize that time Mm. So did you work on the schedule? Like when you quit your job, were you like waking up on the schedule? Yeah. I I, I treated it like a job at that point mm-hmm. because it was like, I can't. And then too, like that's another thing relationship wise. Like if I would have quit and then my <laughs> wife come home and I'm looking at TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that would have been a complete nah, different baby, thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's important. Like I had to, to um, I had to display that that decision was the right decision. But the only way I could display that is through my work ethic and right. me being, uh, having a set routine of what I was working on every day. Mm-hmm. You know? What it was like, so how to, what, what, what would an ideal schedule look like? Uh, so for me, it's like, I'm a, I'm an early bird. So I'm, I work up at six every morning. Um, I work out first. Um, after working out, uh, come back home and I'm in the lab, whatever. And each day could be different. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be, you know, today I'm just doing just straight um, uh, melodies or samples. Okay. You know, so working on that. The next day, the next two days may be like, okay, I need to focus on these projects. Mm-hmm. You know, they got deadlines. I need to make sure the song's done. So working on those. Um, the next day could be strictly content. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I got mm-hmm. some more content I need to shoot. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just like, making sure that every day is going towards what I need to be doing. For, for a producer that doesn't have deadlines yet, doesn't have projects to be working on, no placements, what are some things that are important that they should include in their schedule? Mm. Um, they should just be um, putting the 10,000 hours in. Like, I think, I think getting to a point to where you master, where you master your craft, that's going to be the determining factor when the opportunity comes, if you're going to mm. be able to maximize that opportunity mm-hmm. and, 
and um and maintain that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, since you're treating it like a job, does that mean once it hits five o'clock, you're done? Um, to help that, with the balance? Well, in <laughs> that's the way it's supposed to be, but it right. usually at this point, because I'm trying to like catch up on things, like mm-hmm. I'm usually eight, nine. Mm-hmm. But there's times where it's like, okay, I need to check come, out. Yeah, yeah, I need to check out at five or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, make sure I'm I'm balancing that that time with, you know, my family and right. you know, visiting my parents and and you know, as we get older, those things become a, a whole lot more important. Right. You know, just in you know, because I, I've had, you know, through my twenties and my thirties of doing the late night all day and it's like, okay, at some point I'm I'm more comfortable now. Let's let's start making sure that I'm putting these important things in place in yeah, my schedule. Right, right. Yeah. But what about for the guys that are early on in the grind? Is it should it be eighteen hours a day grinding or should should there be balance? What would you say? Man, I say I say go all in. Go all in. <laughs> yeah. Well don't that, leave that, that chair. That, yeah. you know, at that moment. Because, you know, most people at that age, you have less responsibilities mm. and there's less things that's holding you back from from being able to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, why not? If you got the opportunity, why not just go all in? Mm. You know, yeah. Shout out to Gary V. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Gary V is a, a, a legendary yeah. icon right now. No, <laughs> right, he really <laughs> is. Big motivation, too. Now, I, I got a question. Mm-hmm. Um, now, discovering music, like, how did you discover? Did you just know that music was your gift? Because I know there's... I have friends and we hear, we all know people that are really talented and have a lot of talents, but just can't quite pinpoint that one thing that is theirs. Like, how did you know that music was your thing? Um, It was me failing at basketball. So I thought basketball was my thing. Oh, wow. I, I, I used to... The hoop in school. Oh, so I that's to, why yeah, you're favorite. The, hoop the, producer, in the producer game, yeah. he's going to be out there. He's going to show us all <laughs> up, bro. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, so I thought basketball was my thing. And, um, you know, high school, when you didn't, you know, didn't get any offers, mm-hmm. school, and it's like, okay, now what? Mm-hmm. You know, now what's my thing? But it was, it was in me failing at basketball, um, and that was God rerouting me to my nice. gift, which mm-hmm. was music. Because at that time... I, I relinked with my cousin Kevin, who was mm-hmm. in the music, mm-hmm. and I started being with him every weekend. And me being with him every weekend, he was always like listening and writing, uh, writing raps and freestyling, and that just kind of just I just gravitated towards it. Mm-hmm. And being with him uh, all the time, it just his influences became mine, and I just started to pick up on it. Mm-hmm. And that's what led us to starting a rap group, and then eventually. Over time, me wanting to like dig into like, man, how are people making their these original their original beats, mm. you know? And that's what led me down the the rabbit hole of trying to figure out like the art of production and how how beats were made. Now, I noticed you you know mentioned spiritual spirituality real mm-hmm. quick in there, and the first word in the title of your book is pray. Yeah, let's talk about how important that was and spirituality was on the in the early days of the grind. Man, so important. Um, and pray when I when I say pray, it's just really just having a conversation with God every day, and not just when things are good, like mm. on, in those or not when just things are bad, mm. you know, because those those are times people like to pray is like when things are going yeah. not going right. their way, right. but also when things are going good, like you know, just acknowledge acknowledging God that this has nothing to do with me. Like there's mm. no way I could have um, uh, crafted this plan of getting in the room with this right. person or this person. Like mm-hmm. it it was he was strictly positioning me and creating the right scenarios and connecting certain dots that I had no control over. So it's just me acknowledging that. Mm. And then also having gratitude. I think that's important too. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, you know, just, just us waking up today that that was everything, mm. you know, and anything after that, that happens for us, like that's just bonus. That's mm. extra, mm. you know? So just knowing like little things like that, man, carried me so far. And that's something that I've always, you know, just from, how I was raised and some things that my parents instilled in me and my sister as a, as a youth Mm. growing up. Like that's just something that I've carried up until now. Now for you, does like things like the law of attraction, does that ever conflict with your, um, you know, spirituality and your, you know, your views? No, no, it doesn't because that's all, it's all principle. It's, it's no different from me saying like faith without works is dead. But, and then I'm, I'm talking about like taking action. It's pretty mm. much the same thing, right, mm-hmm. right. you know? So it's just the principle, the, just the principles It's principles. Mm. Right. And being able to work those principles. That's the, that's the difference, the application of it. Mm. Definitely, right. definitely. Yeah. One thing that I was really, that really stood out to me and I was really kind of just like, Oh, snap out. And the book is when you said you disciplined yourself to pray and then go to work and mm. pray and then go to practice. 
What did that do in your like? What did that do for you? Praying and then going to work every single day. Um, that did everything, man. It's it's so many moments to where I felt um like being in rooms with certain individuals and like man, like just having that doubt and fear. Mm-hmm. And I would go to the to the restroom and just say a prayer. Mm. And every time I would say a prayer, I would come back and just feeling like because I would always stand on. It's a certain scripture. I, I mentioned it a few times in the book. And that's, uh, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Mm-hmm. And there were so many moments where I would just go in the bathroom and just say that and be like, okay, I'm going to go back out here. I'm going to stand on this because I believe it. Mm-hmm. And in my whole mindset would just change. My whole attitude and, and mm-hmm. drive would just change because I, at that moment, it's not about me. I'm removing myself and, and putting everything on uh, God's word, mm-hmm. you know. And that that always gave me strength, and it always gave me um, was a that always allowed me to overcome that fear and that right. doubt. Right. Now that's dope. It's kind of like never forgetting about God. You yes. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you yeah. said, a lot and, that's, of and that's what it is. That's that's exactly what it is. When things are going great, you're like, hold on, let me go. Yeah. Let me go talk real quick. Yep. You know what I mean? We mm-hmm. we often forget when things are going great. Definitely. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah. we don't need you now. <laughs> no, no, you, know, yeah. you know, and 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 that can happen. I got it from here, bro. Yeah, I got that, it from that, here. Can, that can happen, and it's like always. Um, reminding myself of that, like just as quick as you get up, like you mm-hmm. can you can be back in the same position or lower than where you started. Right. Yeah. You know, so it's just always reminding myself of that because yeah. I've seen it so many times mm-hmm. on all levels. Yeah, mm-hmm. man, I can relate to that so much because, like, you know, I'll have times where you know I'm really like you know um, focused and 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 you know I mean just praying and mm-hmm. stuff like that, having showing gratitude and stuff. And then, you know, there'll be times where, you know, kind of like, it's like a drought, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but yesterday, so the a prime moment, I was on an airplane, right? Mm-hmm. You know, that turbulence starts hitting. Yeah. And what do you do? It's just like, you know, you start thinking, you know, having that conversation. I'm like, and but I, I stop myself. I'm like, bro, who am I? Like, I haven't, you know what I mean? It's been, a, it's been a minute since I tried to talk to God, you know what I mean? Yeah. And now, now I'm like, feeling a little, yeah. Like, yeah, I man. get it. I get it, man. Yeah, man. yeah so it's just always being aware. <laughs> Just always making sure that I'm aware of, of of that and never leaving him out of of my situation. Yeah, that's big. That's big. Um, so you were talking. So you said you know you'd be in situations like m- maybe studio sessions with with uh, you know, um, big names and stuff like that. Were there moments early on in the career in your career where you're like thinking you're in a situation like oh this is it this is this is this is my big break this mm-hmm. is my turning point and then they kind of didn't pan out. Oh, absolutely. Like I have a I have a chapter in a book called No Failure No Fuel. Mm. And in this chapter, I talk about three specific, um, three three specific incidents of, yo, this is gonna be my my big moment with these three different artists, and it's like, okay, this is this is the moment. It's about to happen for my career, about mm-hmm. to go to the next level. Yeah. And all three of them didn't work out, mm. and I was so discouraged at that moment. But at the same time, I've always been the person to, okay, have your have your your discouraging or dis- uh, your discouraging moment. Or your sad times, mm-hmm. but the next day, get over it and go back in the lab and work harder mm-hmm. and get better. You know, so every time I was having these moments like this, it was actually I was growing and I was mm-hmm. evolving and I was getting better and I was learning things. So each failure, I was actually, you mm-hmm. know, increasing my whole, you know, my mindset was changing and everything. Um, but it's crazy how um I I say something in the in my book like, um, it's crazy how um, people's people's nose, uh, all the all the people's nose had nothing to do with God's one big yes. Mm. Because that year, the the uh, the year after that was happened to be the the year that power happened, mm-hmm. and it was that one moment that all those albums that I didn't make, it meant nothing. Meant nothing, it, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. it meant nothing. And at that moment, I couldn't see that. Mm. You know, I was like, yo, this is the end of the world. Mm. But not knowing that God was already working the situation out for me, I just couldn't see it. Right, mm. right. You know, but, you know, it, it's all, it's always wins after those series of losses. Right. Definitely. How do you discern between, a, like, okay, like, what about in basketball? You could have taken not making basketball as like, oh, okay, I just got to keep pushing the basketball. I got to <laughs> keep pushing. <laughs> what about, it? like, why did you stick with producing, like? How does someone know when a loss is just a setup versus like a redirection? When to hang it up. Kind of okay, exactly. okay, that, that's, that's good. So it was me having all these small success moments okay. within within me pursuing it. 
Mm. You know, um, you know, like I, I, I spoke earlier on me starting my group and then things happening from that, you know, that were moments to where, um, oh, for instance, like it was, it was, everything was derived from me starting to take action and starting to see little things come back. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a section in the, in the source called the unsigned height. Mm -hmm. And this was, a, mm -hmm. this was, I used to, every oh, yeah, time I, I, I like buy the source, story. me and my cousin was like, yo, we got to get in this section. Cause it was like mm -hmm. notorious B.I.G. Mm -hmm. end up being in there mob deep and all these, <laughs> these rappers that we, that we uh, were in, in, uh, influenced by and inspired by, you know? So I wound up be like, yo, let's just, let's just make a demo and send it, wind up sending it. And a few months later, we end up in the unsigned height. Oh, that's right. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. Rap Sheets, it was another publication called Rap Sheets. The same thing, they had this little unsigned hype section where people would, they would uh, highlight up and coming. Mm -hmm. Same thing, send our demo in. A few months later, we end up in that. So it's mm -hmm. like, oh, I see how this is working. So little moments little like moments that. Like that. Like, yeah. okay, gotcha. Little yeah. moments like that. Yeah, little moments like that. Even, even a, I remember uh, being on the couch and seeing a, a Winterfresh commercial coming mm -hmm. on one day. And um, it was like, a con it was a contest. So it was like, uh, um, be the next oh, you group. Did, yeah, 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 be the yeah, next yeah, group yeah. to to write rent a fresh commercial, record a song and a video for the product and send it in. We mm -hmm. wind up doing that and we wind up being the the face of Winter Fresh. Oh, right. sure. You know, for and and that was crazy because that was we started seeing like probably the the most significant amount of checks that we've seen. It was like we was getting checks for like 15 grand, 10 wow. grand. Mm -hmm. 12 grand Winter just for Fresh. being in this Winterfresh commercial that we shot. And Damn. I started to look back on these things and be like, man, none of this would would not have existed if right. we hadn't applied ourselves and taken the action on right. doing right. it. Yeah. Right. Perfected your craft and, and, and shot just, your and shot. just shooting your shots. Yeah. yeah. Right. So at that moment, it's like, Ooh. oh, I'm gonna really start shooting. Right. So I just started <laughs> just doing all types of things every day, making sure that I was planting seeds and sending beats to people, you know, the MySpace yeah. days, connecting with artists, yeah. sending mm. beats and you know, and things didn't happen right at the moment. Some things happened maybe six months down the line. Some things mm -hmm. maybe happened five years down the line. But it was a matter of just planting those seeds. And at some point, it just started to come back. Mm -hmm. So you had a bunch of, you, you had some small successes. You had some, some, some failures. You had your big moment with power. Mm -hmm. What are some ways that that changed your life? Oh, wow. It changed everything. <laughs> it changed everything, man. Um, that was the moment. Like I remember when Power first dropped. Literally that same day, I got a call from every publisher. Mm. We're like, yo, we want to fly you out. You know, set up uh, set up a meeting with you. Yeah. You know, so it was a it was a very um overwhelming moment. You know, with things coming coming at you so fast and just not knowing, you know, I, I'm new to that world at that mm -hmm. moment. So it's like, man, what do I do? Mm -hmm. What do I go? What Who do I go with? You know, and just being thrown into that. And then at that moment, I was still working strong with Kanye. And then he wanted to sign me to his his very good Beats production. So we, I, was going, I was going through negotiations, negotiations with that. And uh, we couldn't come to terms on that. So that went a whole seven to eight months. And to a point though, I, I really thought that I was about to blow that whole opportunity mm -hmm. because it was certain things that I was kind of standing firm on. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, if we could just get this change. And my my attorney was like, it's, at the end of the day, it's your decision. But he was like, I would wait till we at least, you know, he at least changes these things because yeah. these are important within the 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 longevity of your career. Right. Right? You know, so I, I hung that out and that was a thing where Kanye called me one day and he was like, yo, it's like, I really want you to just be a part of the team. Uh, have your attorney um, draw up the contract and let's just get this done. Mm -hmm. And that was a moment too of like holding out and having patience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because sometimes it's easy to jump into things when we're kind of desperate. Yeah. You know, and, and when things happen fast for us that we've been waiting on for so long, right. it's easy to jump into that. But vulnerable. Yeah. I'm so vulnerable, man, in those moments. So um, so yeah, man, it was just a it was an overwhelming time. So I wound up doing that deal with him and and being with him everywhere from you know Hawaii five, six times, and then went going to London with him and Australia to work mm -hmm. on the Wash the Throne and mm -hmm. 
and um, New York and all types of places with them just working on certain projects. Mm. And are you still uh, under Good Beats? Very Good Beats? No, no, no. So that was only like maybe three years. So okay. from between 2010 to about 2014. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, while we're talking about Kanye, you, uh, on your Blab chat, you you told the story about um, when you're in, I think you were in Paris or London working on Watch the Throne. Mm-hmm. And it said it was you, Ryan Leslie. Uh, who else was there? Uh, no idea was there. No ID Mike was Dean. There. And, and when it was your time, <laughs> when it was your time to play some stuff, yeah, <laughs> you didn't get the re- response you wanted. So can you tell that? Story? Yeah, man. So we're out in uh, London, and um, <clears throat> we're at Peter Gabriel Studio. I think it's called Real Real World or Real Life Studio, Real World Studio Studios. And uh, yeah, so we're all in this one room. So there is not booths. It's it's uh, no ID right here. I'm right here. You got Ryan Leslie there. Of course, Mike Dean and Noah at the console. And then Jay and Ye. They, what a room. <laughs> I, know, right? I know, right? It's crazy. Straight ghost, right? Crazy. So, so their chairs are like facing each other in the center. Mm-hmm. Center. Um, so they would just look, they would record and then they would just look up like, yo, what y'all got? Yeah. So we plug in, ox in, and we play things. And it was one particular moment to where I played something that was incomplete. I was still working on it, but I took my headphones off and played it. And Kanye standing at the Kanye uh, at the console with these dark uh, shades on, <laughs> and I remember him just gently pushing the shades down where I could see his eyes, <laughs> and he's like, "Please don't tell me you came up here to play me some stuff like that." Wow. And at that moment, I wanted to go home. Literally, I was just like, "Man, I don't even want to be here no more," because oh, my man. heart was just yeah. just pumping and my hands started shaking. And and at that moment, it's like, okay. What idea do I play next? Because I'm I'm terrified at this moment. Mm-hmm. It's like, what do I play next? So, and I wind up playing, and then it wind up being the the murder of excellence joint. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that that could have went several ways. That could have <laughs> went so many different ways. Yeah, like if you <laughs> like, y'all, just go ahead and get him up out of here. Right? <laughs> you know, you could have you could have spazzed out all kinds of stuff. Yeah. What you mean? <laughs> yeah. what, what are some ways? And I, I think this is this is major. You now I've been in some rooms, you know, with some artists and stuff, and even some 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 bigger producers where. Ego, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you're dealing with people with ego. What What are some advice you can give to dealing with artists and stuff and dealing with their ego? Um, I would say, man, in any situation, just be you and and don't let people's energy or um, reactions to things affect you. Mm. Like, stay in your zone, stay in your the, the mode you're in and just be that positive energy because one one person's bad energy can affect the whole room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it really can. Like, I, I've seen it, you know, so it's just a matter of you staying in a good, good space, you know, to be able to redirect that energy back to, to, to being good. Mm. And just kind of, is it more of like a, don't spaz out? Like, yeah, yeah. don't spaz out. Don't spaz out. <laughs> Definitely don't spaz out. <laughs> just kind of let if, them If anything, that. just r- remove yourself from the equation or from mm. that, from that atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. But I mean, that's hard though, because you know what I mean. You want to spaz yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it's like, bro, you're not yeah, gonna, I'm not no, gonna I get, get talked yeah. to like this. I'm not gonna get treated yeah, like this. Yeah, no, I, I totally get it. Younger. We I younger. totally get it. Yeah, yeah. kind of weaker in the mind. We younger. Yeah. So. Mm. But yeah. yeah. Um. So after that, so would you say after that point in your career, it kind of was like an exponential growth, or? Yeah, definitely. Because at that point, um, because I was with. Kanye so much like I was meeting so many different people yeah, and I was able to build relationships and then not only that the power song was was taken off so other people were coming at me too so I was really using that moment to really just build like some solid relationships with people yeah, and um, <clears throat> and be able to just really turn uh, that moment into um, you know just create longevity from that situation mm-hmm. 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 And what what were you using to produce at this period of time? Uh, at that time, I did Power on Reason. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's the the sample chopper and reason called? Uh, uh Doctor Doctor X. Doctor X. Doctor X. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's what I ch- that's what I was chopping in Doctor X. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you you you're, you're not on Reason no more, right? No, nah, I use it for um the I like the effects in it. Okay. Mm-hmm. But I use um uh, I'm actually I'm actually bouncing back between dials. So I'm using Ableton. Okay. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I use FL, and then sometimes I use Studio One. Mm-hmm. I get kind of bored, mm-hmm. easy in DAWs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, me bouncing back, it, it it's it's um keeping me fresh mm-hmm. because I sometimes I'll forget certain things, you know, and I'll be able to go in there and just like 
my approach is different. Mm-hmm. You know, so sometimes yeah, yeah. I'll mm-hmm. get different results because mm-hmm. sometimes I hate getting in that frame of being like knowing everything every time I do the same beat. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, so it becomes more template based. Okay. Yeah. You know, so I like to keep it fresh, keep mm-hmm. things new and fresh. So that's the way I'm doing it, just bouncing back between different dogs to give mm-hmm. me do, new approaches so I can uh, create new results. Okay. Yeah. This uh, is kind of a, a random question, but it kind of pertains. When you're working with an artist like Madonna, are you using <laughs> FL Studio? No. So with the Madonna situation, I wasn't even... I was supposed to be there for production, mm-hmm. but it wind up being us just writing the songs. Mm. So on the Madonna album, I'm I'm I co-wrote like seven songs on that album. Mm. Lyrics? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So it was it was, okay, it was so co-writing what, situation. Okay, so what about <laughs> um I don't know, like another big artist. Like well, you had Lord in there. Okay. Yeah, Lord was. Are production. you pulling up FL Studio or are you Yeah, yeah so dang, what was I using when I was working on Lord? Uh, just artists like that, like not typical hip hop yeah, yeah, artists. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just pulling, pulling up whatever. Up yeah, right. mm. just different drums, right? Mm. Yeah, just right. yeah, just, just different drums. Use, using just whatever, depending on the artist, of course. Right. But yeah, just going in, what you just doing what you do, taking you what you do, do to whatever that. Yeah, and, and that was one of the things prior to like working with Kanye when I was when I was heading out there. It was like, man, what is the special things that they use, and you always want to. Think of them not using what yeah. everybody else is yeah. using, and he Pulling just had up the his, same thing. You yeah, have. <laughs> he's like, I go in there and he has the ASR, right? And I'm like, oh, okay, it's just his ear. Mm. Yeah, know, the, right. The, the 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 gift is in his ear, right? And 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 finding the right samples and chopping it the right way. Right. Yeah, he, you he, know? he always loved that ASR. I wonder if he still uses that. The ASR. I'm not sure. I'm not, mm. I'm not even sure. And the and the what the, the, the 1500 or 2500 the uh, what MPC yeah, MPC the XL, yeah MPC 2000 I think. Oh, it was a 2000 XL, XL? yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember those videos where where he was back in the studio with the, yeah, the yeah. yellow polo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that shit. Yeah, with the young, he was right. like, he was like yeah. <laughs> old Kanye videos are the best, bro. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you you still stay in Dallas, and you were in Dallas this whole period of time. Mm-hmm. I guess that's a big question because I, I guess I would assume you would you know relocate to like L.A. or New York or something like that once you kind of reached a certain level. What 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 were some reasons you stayed in Dallas? Um. It just made sense for me at the time. Like that was always one of the things I was going back and forth with because people were always trying to get me to move to LA my whole career. Yeah. Um, but I was just taking flights to where I wherever I needed to be. Mm. You know, and um and then when I started looking at like the price the the cost of living in LA versus Dallas, man, it was Dallas, it was a no brainer. Yeah. You know, so you know, me and my wife, we was like, Man, let's just stay here and we wind up just building I crib there. We got everything we want, you know, the square footage. Got had my studio built in it, and and pretty much laid it out. Yeah. And um, and yeah, it just made more sense to do that, and then just yeah. take a trip whenever I needed to be there. Mm-hmm. And then over time, we did get an apartment in L.A. for a few years. Okay. Um, you know, just so I could be out there more instead of paying for the hotels. But yeah, I just wound up staying in Dallas because I. It, and then it goes it goes with my personality too. Like I'm. I'm more, let's go to LA, lock in, go hard for two weeks. And get out. And get out and have mm-hmm. my peace. Because my mm-hmm. peace of mind is more important than than anything. Mm-hmm. And, nice. you know, just being happy and, you know, and you can really get, if I, I think if I lived in LA, I'd probably work myself to death. Because mm-hmm. it's, const, it's, it's constant in right. studio, mm-hmm. studio, studio. And, and it's like, no, I need to have moments to where I can sit back, work in my own pace and really just figure things out. Mm. you know mm. yeah um talking more about dolls and stuff what are what are like some techniques and stuff and maybe some effects plugins that you're using on your melodies these days um a lot of the same thing everybody else using of mm. course like the rc20 and mm. uh I, one thing i have been doing and i've I've been doing a lot is uh incorporating a lot of my hardware synths. okay you know i have like a juno 106 and fire the moog mm. um I just got a um, the big prop, move, the profit. Like no, nah, I don't got the big one. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I don't have a. Might have shoot something the guitar center. <laughs> yeah, the, the ones that are like what, eight fire. grand or something. Oh no, yeah, no, 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 it's crazy, crazy, bro. Bro. It's it's crazy. Crazy. It's crazy too. <laughs> nah, but those those two like those were inspired by Kanye and and uh, Mike Dean. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, mm-hmm. every session every session I would do with them, they wouldn't do the session if they didn't have a Juno or in a in a, mm. in a Moog in there. Wow, really? And I used to think like, man, what is it about? 
And then I started seeing like what what Mike was able to do with it and, yeah. and so the he's, texture he's, that it was coming from. And I was like, w- whenever I can afford those two pieces, that was going to be my first two pieces. So those mm. were my first two pieces of, of, of gear. Now with them and for you as well, are you guys mostly working off of like just regular Juno presets? You guys tweaking? like Yeah, a lot of tweaking. The, the good thing about the Juno to me is like there's not really any presets, there's numbers okay. uh, to give you like a starting point. And then from that point, you just, you just tweaking knobs to kind of get mm. what you want. Mm. You know, so there's, there's every, every time you pull something up, it's going to be different, mm. you know? So that's what I like about it. Cause there's not a, you just don't know. You're just going basically off of how it feels and how it sounds, mm. you know? So that's a patient game to play. Bro. Yeah. That's a patient game yeah. to play. So do you feel like cooking over analog sounds out of like a Moog is better than VSTs? Um, I think so, but in the today's climate of music, it I, I don't think it really matters. It's it's a mm. preference thing, mm. you know, because most a, a lot of the stuff that's coming out are just strictly VSTs and it's working. Mm. You know, I think it just depends on like your preference. And like I'm I'm big on like just hardware because that's what I came up in. Mm-hmm. You know, so I still try to incorporate, you know, still use the VSTs, but incorporate little pieces of of the hardware within mm. that mm-hmm. just to give it just a little bit of difference and yeah, a little bit of right. edge. Mm. I noticed uh, like kind of recently uh, outboard effects and hardware effects are kind of um, becoming like kind of like a trend and popular. Is there mm-hmm. any, anything you're doing with those? Like maybe uh, even like tape, like people recording the tape and stuff like that. It's kind mm-hmm. of, been, yeah, I haven't been lately because I, I, I've been, you know, that, when you get into processes like that, you really have to be in it mm-hmm. because, you know, when you're moving fast, it's, it's, it's hard to get back in into that. But once you block it, like I can block out a week and be like, okay, this week, I'm, this is all I'm doing is just wanting to mm. just really get experimental and okay. create mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. But when you're on the go and stuff moving so fast, it's hard to get in the mode. So you get the preset. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, it's, it's so time consuming. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's very time consuming. How many beats you making like uh, a day or a week? Shh, man, bro. I'm, you know, with the book promotions and stuff, it's been hard. But yeah. I'm for the last two weeks, I'm back to it. I have to uh, at least a minimum of two or three hours working on music, mm. even mm-hmm. if it's just pulling my laptop up and do it because I'm I'm about to really, um, really like go back strong in, mm. in the music. Like Word. I'm super excited about it. Yeah, you, you act like you haven't been going strong. Though. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, right. right. Flip to these last pages. <laughs> <laughs> shit, shit, not most careers. Yeah, no, right. no, I mean a, a, a lot of things has been. Well, well, yeah, um, yeah, I have moments. Yeah, but in those moments that I'm going hard, like I'm going real, really hard. Yeah, mm. <laughs> but then even probably like a lot of the 2019 placements, I'd assume those are from seeds that may have been planted a couple of years before. Not even. Quick. Yeah, some some of them were. I think. Um, well, like the the Kirk Franklin was last year. I did that Hold last up, year. Kirk Franklin. Wait, what? That's where my third Grammy came from. What song? And yeah. it's called Strong God. On the last album, but why have I not heard that? It, it would be the song right above this one. <laughs> oh, I was about to say, oh boy, yeah, Kurt. So. He's going crazy. He's so yeah, so I, I, did, I, did, I did a song called um, "Strong God" on his on his new album, which uh, the album got a Grammy. That's how I got my third mm. one with that. But um, so that was done last year. Reason was done last year. Mm. Um. Tiana, yep. Yeah, it's a lot. I, I it's a lot like, in 2019. This is solid. LA, lot. uh, the Wabi and Corday. That Wabi and Corday was that that that's a prime example of just showing up because um I went to LA. I went to LA one day and uh he hit me. He saw I was in LA, I had posted. He was like, yo, let's lock in today. And I was like, cool. Mm. And like I was telling you earlier, I'm a I'm an early bird. So mm. I, you know, I'm good till about 6 p.m. But around after that, I start to really just Mm-hmm. Just uh, really clunk out. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he 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 was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna hit you back." So time runs at uh, six p.m., eight p.m., and I hadn't heard from him. So I'm like, "Okay, yeah, he's not hitting me." So I'm laying down, mm-hmm. looking at Netflix about midnight, and then I get a text alert. And he's like, "Yo, pull up." He send me the address, and I'm like, mm. "So I'm actually typing to him." Yo, bro, I'm already in the bed. Let's mm-hmm. let's link up tomorrow. Yeah. And before I hit CN, I was like, man, let me just get up and, mm-hmm. and, and go to the studio. So Word. I went ahead and uh, went to the studio that day and we wind up doing that uh his single joint uh location ships mm-hmm. recording mm-hmm. that that night. So that's when I'm always reminded, like just you gotta show up sometime. Mm-hmm. Man, I and, hear that. And it's it's as I me personally, 
as I've gotten more comfortable, like financially and things, it, it's harder sometimes to do yeah. that because you, you, I can be more selective. Yeah. But then sometimes I'd be like, I'd be in those moments of, yo, let's just, let's just get back to that hunger stage mm. and just start doing what I need to do to get to the next, the next, next level. Definitely. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. You always got to keep going. I always got to keep going. Man, such a wide spectrum. You, we got Kirk Franklin. We got Lil Xan. <laughs> yeah, Lil Xan. The that's, baby. that's the one we did uh, a couple years ago when we were yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. At, at the yeah. crib. You yeah. were Lone Star. Yeah. Yeah. Such a, such a wide spectrum. Um, what, uh, so you, that, that record in particular, you guys had Studio One and FL pulled mm-hmm. up. Yep. Where, where was it? You and Studio One and Lone Star and, and Lone Star and FL. Okay. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dope, dope. Yeah, he delivered the idea and, and I took it, took it and did my thing and, Mm. And my uh my managers at the time were managing Lil Xan, so I just sent it to them. They loved it. Gotcha, mm. gotcha. Yeah. Dope, dope. No, I got a question. Well, I just want to uh, ask you about YouTube because I watched an interview. You talking about you're always learning. What are some of the channels you go to, like on YouTube, to look up tutorials? Man, that's a, that's a good question. Um, um, <sighs> man, I'll be so I'll be so random. Like I I'll, mm. I'll do like decap. Mm. Shout out to Decap. Yeah, shout out Decap. Yeah. Man, dude is a scientist. Yeah, he's fire. I was just at a studio. Literally. Yeah, I saw that. We were I, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Decap and uh, who is it? Busy Work Beats. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. him. Busy Works. Yeah, and then a lot of a lot of it now is like quick IG videos that I get like these little mm. quick okay. pointers from that people post. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, it's mm. just random, a bunch of random yeah. things. Yeah, mm. most definitely. Um, and then you. Talking about Lone Star and stuff, you managed to build a team. Yeah. Um. What kind of what kind of were the points that you came to where you're like, I need to start signing producers and bringing? Uh, where mm-hmm. there was a there was a moment, uh, in my career after the power situation happened, to where my good friend friend Ryan Fest had a conversation with me, and he was like, "Now that I blessed you, it's time for you to bless others." Mm. You know, and that hit me. It's like you know, I can't just be here because it's mm. it's. The the thing the the one of the the most um uh significant things that I've been able to realize in my career is like there's enough for everybody. Mm. Like me pulling people in to do things, like that doesn't take away from me. In fact, it actually adds on adds value to what I'm doing. Mm. You know, it doesn't take anything away. So you know, I'm always when people when producers don't give other producers credit and all mm-hmm. that. Like, I'm like, man, that's, it's not going to take anything away from you from right. giving somebody their, their proper due, yeah. proper mm-hmm. credit, you know? But, um, but yeah, uh, Ron Fest told me that. So at that moment, it's like, okay, I have a platform now. Let me start um, <clears throat> uh, s- seeing who has talent, but not only that, like every producer that I, I signed, it was, okay, he has talent, but let me observe them over a year just to see like their character, uh, character, integrity, mm. like how they're moving. Cause I think mm. that's more important than just the talent because I don't want right. to do business with anyone that's going to be complete opposite of my values or, mm. or what I believe in. Okay. You know, so Lone Star was one of those guys, man, who was just a good dude, super talented. And, um, and I just wanted to, I, I just like to be able to see other people, um, be able to accomplish their dreams, man. Mm. And like, I, you know, presenting him with his, his first plaque on the Eminem joint, like yeah, that was right. a, that was a moment, and you know, just being able to see people get their first plaques and first Grammy noms, and and just be on these albums that they've always dreamed of, of being on, like that's everything to me. Yeah, mm-hmm. it means everything. No, I fuck with Long Star man. I, we stayed in contact since I linked. Oh, with that's him. dope. Yeah, your crew, that's dope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, super good dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but I think it's I, I think it's important to be able to give back because it was a moment where I was in the same seat they're in, just wanting, waiting for opportunity. Yeah, right, you know, right. and somebody gave me that opportunity. So it's like, okay, how can I, how can I provide opportunities for other people? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, what the mindset, would you say when you started signing producers, was it more as like, uh, I want to sign producers and kind of help build their brand and their, um, their, like them as producers? Mm-hmm. Or was it kind of more like signing people because they had skills like, oh, I need him for melodies. I need him for this. I need him for that kind of it, thing. It was both. Okay. Uh, one thing I do with my guys um, when when they're up under my umbrella is I educate mm. and I want them to know like they like Lone Star knows that he can call me anytime if you got a question business related or whatever mm. because I, I like being able to uh, be um, an, 
uh, just to provide information and, mm-hmm. and be able to educate in certain situations. Because there was a time I didn't know certain things. Yeah. And I think that's where the value comes in is being able to know things so that you don't have to make certain mistakes that I may have mm-hmm. may have made or somebody else may have made, mm-hmm. you know, and, and just to be able to overcome those those little uh, things that could be roadblocks in people's careers. Mm, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, man, I, we we got. I know we got some some more stuff to to go here, man. Um, I want to ask you about Brandon. Yeah. So a lot of producers, <laughs> a lot of producers, they cry about not getting credit. Cry about people not respecting them as a producer. Mm-hmm. And they're not conducting themselves as a producer. So I want to ask you, how does a producer brand himself to get respect as a producer? Oh, that's a good question. Huh, how does a producer brand himself? Um, I think it has a lot to do with um, <clears throat> with how you want to be, uh, how do you how you want to present yourself? Like, how are you putting yourself out there? Like, 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 I think a producer has to know exactly what they want to do. And they have to know exactly. Okay, this is um, this is the direction I'm going in. This mm-hmm. is the sound. This is you know, and have all of that planned out, right? And then be able to just execute that. Okay. I think the execution of it is the, what makes it makes the difference. Like being able to say certain things or be able to uh, uh, create certain things. That's only uh, one scale of it. But once you're able to execute it and make the presentation of it look oh, the way you want it, then that's the difference. Right, right. You know, so I think it's all in the presentation. Okay. Definitely. Um, we got it, man. We got to One of the major things we got, we got to talk about Dallas uh, music scene, music culture. Cause okay. Oh, yes. We, man, we, 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 we love Dallas, man. We were out there, what, 2018? Mm-hmm. We did our events nice. out there and just everybody was showing love, man. There was like, it seemed like everyone is kind of like, it's like a tight knit community. Yeah, everyone yeah. wants to help each other. Is, like, shout bro. out to Sick with it. He yeah, was showing that's us around. My guy. Yeah. And sick. He could have easily been like, I don't want to introduce him to S1. But yeah. he was like, yo, man, you guys got to go link with S1. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And really everyone, man. And just, I, I really, I really like the culture, the producer culture. Oh, man, I, I, I love uh, the Dallas producers, man. And like you say, that's, that's pretty much most of all the producers that's out there. Like, we have a really close knit, um, um, family. Mm. Yeah, I, call yeah. it, I call it a family, man. Mm-hmm. And we always like uh, sharing uh, not only just contacts, but we're sharing like opportunities and we're yeah. bringing people mm-hmm. in on certain things. And I love that because mm-hmm. I think that's really what it's about. That's, how, that's what makes us stronger. Right. And that's what makes us bigger is for us, us to come together. It's not about one producer doing this and then everybody else. It's like, no, how can we involve everybody and mm. and be able to share these the the opportunities and the possibilities of what could become of this. Definitely. Yeah. Like the Dallas culture, they're real positive, but they also come to compete when Man, it comes to bro. the beast, the beat battles. So yeah, many, they not playing. Yeah, like, it's it's so much talent. It's so much yeah. and even on the artist level too. Mm. Like we have some really dope artists. Who's the Yellow Beasy from Dallas, right? Yeah, Yellow yeah, Beasy's yeah, from yeah. Dallas. Uh you got like Bobby Sessions. Okay, yeah. Um uh, you have um, this artist named DQ. He's a rapper. He's a he's a super dope rapper. Um, <clears throat> this artist I've been working with a lot. Um, his name is Derek Scott. Mm. He's like gonna be like my special like project project. Oh, mm. no. He's like Kendrick level status rap. Damn. That's a book. Yeah. Hey, that's fine. <laughs> hey, all right. We gotta check yeah. it out. Yeah. 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 All right. No, nah, <laughs> hey, for real. I'm not playing. I'm a, I'm a, yeah. I I I, I put that. I put it down. Right? Right. Right. Say yeah. less. Say less. He's, he's, yeah. Derek Scott. Derek Scott. I'm gonna have to yeah. listen to that. He's, he's yeah, man. They were they were they were showing a lot of shout out to my boy YL. My boy YL. He brought us to Fuel City Taco. <laughs> 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 All right. He had, he, had, he had us on the on the gas house. You know what I mean? He, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was showing a lot of love. And then you, you man, you pulled up to our event. That was fire. Yeah. Reezy Tunes. He's another good. Yeah, Reezy's yeah. 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 hard. Been staying in contact with him too. Um, I always pop up in his live. Producers, man. Yeah. yeah. What about the beat battle scene? Like, you think it's like, what is the beat battle scene? Because it's not as, do you think it's as popular as it used to be? Uh, I don't think so. It's I mean, not the same? Yeah, I don't think it's the same. I don't think it's the same. Um, I think, and that's one of them things to where I think that, um, you know, the beat battle scenes are good. I Like, I had a period in my career that where for the first two or three years, like that's all I was doing because I, mean, I wanted yeah. to expand my, you know, as a as my exposure as a producer, I wanted mm-hmm. to expand that and I felt like that was the best way. So I was doing the showcases, you know, with the I Standard and Red Bull, Big Tune, right. Shot Money's One Stop Shop and I was doing, competing 
uh, very well in these events. And they did. They and, helped a lot. It yeah. helped a whole lot yeah. because I was able to meet so many people. Right. And not only that, I was able to build relationships with other producers mm-hmm. who are now, um, you know, primetime producers. Right. You know, and um, I was able to build with them on the ground up and we were basically on the come up together. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's another one of those things. Like, for instance, Jake One, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, with me building with him and just us having this relationship for this long time, you know, that's how I ended up doing the Money Dance song with him. You know, mm-hmm. getting, getting that co-production credit on mm-hmm. him. With, I mean, uh, co-production credit on that song with him is 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 because of that relationship. So mm-hmm. it's a it's a lot of little things that add up to be the big things mm-hmm. over time. Yeah. You know, it's just a matter of just planting those seeds and, and connecting those dots in mm-hmm. the early stages mm-hmm. so that when it becomes something, it's like, okay, now you, now the, now you can actually use these things and, and create some type of uh, opportunities from it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think a, a big thing is even if like, you know, beat battle events and maybe producer showcases, artist showcases and stuff, even though it's not like, they're going to necessarily be life changing. Mm-hmm. I still see a lot of producers and artists go to these events and not really take full advantage, like not really yeah. tackle the networking and stuff like that. What are some advice you could give and to really get the value out of it? Yeah, well, those, those events should be strictly for the networking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I've seen so many producers uh, compete in those events, but they get stuck with just the competition in, mm. and it's like that's not They're what like, the, that's not even what the <laughs> yeah that's not yeah. even what the event is about. Right. Right? That's not gonna take you to the next level. Yeah. Right? But it's like doing have it, uh, you know, being able to really uh, maximize those networking opportunities and build those relationships with some key people, mm-hmm. and uh, and then building with the other producers as well. Mm. I think th- that's the that should be the focus when doing those competition as opposed to like I'm trying to win this competition yeah. and be mm. the guy yeah. on the stage yeah. you know? going in with it with a completely completely different mindset, different mindset. And, and, and perspective yeah now you're going to try and get as many contacts as possible or are you planning out <laughs> are you planning out like okay I want that dude I want to get a relationship with that dude that dude and that dude or um, are you just like look anybody let me get your phone number blah 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 well when I was doing it it was um, yeah it was like anybody mm. you never know what Right. You never know who's the next person, right. who's the next key person going to be. Yeah. Right. You know, um, there's been many moments of that, man. I could, I could tell you one, uh, Big Ups Murder Beats, man. So I, last year I posted a picture of me and Murder Beats and I think it was Willie Donut. And it was after a, a session and it Murder and him and Corey, his manager, mm-hmm. they just came by. And that was my first time meeting Murder. And he had no records. He had no like radio records at the time. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. So I posted this picture. And he hit me. He was like, yo. He was like, that was you on the picture? He was like, I had no idea. He was like, bro, the 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 encouragement that you gave me that night, the words you told me was everything to me. And he and and just to see him now, yeah, you know, like right. he's like the biggest producer in the game. It's like wow. You're about murder beats, like yeah, murder yeah. beats. Murder, oh, yeah, wow. yeah, murder beats. Yeah. So he, had, you had taken a picture with him when he was younger, and like, yeah, I, yeah. Wow. And, and I had, I had like, we had a conversation, and I was mm-hmm. just giving him some encouraging words, and like, mm-hmm. man, tell him to stay with it, and mm-hmm. giving him some keep. And he was like, yo, mm-hmm. he was like, I never forgot what you told me, and I didn't even realize that was you. Wow, <laughs> that's <laughs> crazy. Wow, that's crazy. And yeah. Then, and and I, I noticed some too. Like you could have easily been like. I don't need to talk to this dude kind of thing. Man, right, you know right. I mean? and, and that's the thing. You never know who the next yeah. big right. producer is going to be. Right. And I learned that early on, me and my wife, we used to go in the studios, like with, uh, whether with, with, with Ye or with other producers like Rodney Darkchild. And we would start building with the interns, mm. you know, because these interns would become like A&Rs yeah. and execs yeah. at these labels. And then at that point, they're like, yo, I remember... You know, I want to bring you in on this situation. I've had that happen so many times. Just being, you know, just just looking at, just treating everybody the same. That's really what Mm -hmm. it boils down to. Mm -hmm. No matter what level they on, just being able to uh, give them some some words of encouragement or some keys that they may can use on Mm -hmm. their their come up. Mm -hmm. You know, that was going to help them grow. Uh, But just being really authentic with 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 you know how you you're communicating and conversating with people and building right. those relationships. Yeah, and I think internships are honestly they're so huge because not only does it help you build the relationships and see if that's what you want to do, 
but also it gives you like a humble mindset because like when you go see another intern you can mm -hmm. always remember like I remember being in that stage so you treat yeah, it like it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so definitely. I've had a bunch of moments like that even with foreign tech Mm. Yeah, Boys, yeah, four and four and tech. But they was mechanics yeah, yeah. at the time. Wow. Ooh, what do you mean, like shop mechanics? Uh, no, I think oh, no, they, the name, name mechanics. Yeah, the name oh, of oh, mechanics. Oh. Yeah, and because for man, it's, mm. it's it's so good to see like 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 even him doing like just wonderful things, man. Mm -hmm. Because I seen the grind and the come up. Mm -hmm. But I remember him hitting uh, me and my wife up one day because he was a big fan of me mm -hmm. before he started getting records, and he was like, "Man, I just want to." Just pick your brain and just meet up. So he he wind up. We were in Miami at the time, and we invited him to the hotel. And we sat mm. in the lobby like three, four hours. Wow. You know, just talking. And he was just mm. asking questions and giving them, giving them. And I was just giving him insight and feedback on certain things. Mm. So to see where he's at now, it's like wow. Like he really was mm. able to. You know, he he stayed with it and he's doing great things, man. So I I, I love those type of stories. Right. Yeah. Man, work it. So for the people at home that want to, um, you know, stay in touch with you, I know you do events. And you got any events mm -hmm, coming up or anything mm -hmm. where they can? Um, right, right now I don't, but I have. I'm just doing like book signings right now okay. in certain certain areas. Uh, but in summertime, I plan on br bringing back my S1 assemblies. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's when I was having you know producers and artists come to these things, and we lock in, and then I would have these lock ins afterwards, mm -hmm. where we lock in the studio and create. Uh, create songs, mm -hmm. you know, and and then I just shop these for for placements, mm -hmm. which I was able to get one from one last year on the um, the Boogie album, the Rainy Days, mm -hmm. and that derived a, a piece of that because it's two parts two parts of it. My my guy Street Runner did the the uh, first half, and then it's a section where M is rapping, where me, my guy Jay Oliver, and um, <clears throat> guy Nate Connor, who was at the S One Assembly, that mm -hmm. came from that. That yeah. day. Mm. Yeah. So. Shout out to Street Runner too, man. Yeah, yeah that's my yeah. guy, man. I was with him yesterday. Yeah. Mm. Both your guys' walls are like <laughs> <laughs> make me want to give up, but inspire me at the same time. Like, <laughs> crazy, crazy place for this crazy record. Right. Yeah, man. Um, so yeah, man. Pray, focus, plan, execute. Yeah. So man. Now where can they go grab a copy? Uh yeah, so they can they can grab a copy, a physical copy on my site at symbolic1.com. Okay. Or they can grab the ebook at Amazon, Apple Books, Dope. Barnes and Noble. Um, and then my audio book I was is, gonna say, my audio book is coming in the next couple of weeks. I read by you and I, I yeah, I narrated it. Oh yeah, I got And then to and then one. I had um my my good friend Ron Fest, he narrated the about the author dope. part of it. Mm, yeah, dope, dope. yeah. And then I and then I I went a little bit further and have like some some little composition uh, that's what and I was beats hoping in for. between. I was like, yeah, just kind of add a little bit more value to it as well. That's what's up. That's fine. I was really thinking yeah. about that today. I was like, I know if he did an audio book, I know he had to put some beats in you there. Got I was you like, got to. He has can't to. Can't leave it dry. <laughs> you can't. You can't. <laughs> but man, I got to say too, I think it's so, what a time to be alive as a producer. You're out in Atlanta. You can actually do a press run now as a producer. Right. right? Yeah. Bro, in like, Atlanta, you know what I mean? You can it, it, it's, like, it's crazy, it's man. Crazy. What are, yeah, it's, it's crazy. What are some of the other shows? Because I know people probably want to hear more. What are some of the other shows you've done while you're out here? Um, oh yeah, so I did um, Cymatics. Yeah, I did. Yeah, big up Cymatics. Mm -hmm. I did the uh, the A Room. That's Needles. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. A Room show. I did um, Needles. Why am I uh, Willpower? Decap was just talking about Needles. Decap was yeah. okay. Yeah, I just yeah, heard it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Needles is fire. Mm -hmm. uh, I did um, Willpower. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah Willpower. Yeah. Um, of course, you guys. Hey, uh, save the best for last. Nah, I'm just <laughs> Ooh, I'm just roasted. Nah, shout out, man. Shout out to all the producer podcasts. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, real, it's, yeah. it's really dope to see, like, you guys just, because that's a, that's a, a very, um, it's a platform for information. Mm -hmm. And then I don't let just to be able to inspire people mm -hmm. and people come on and tell their stories. Cause that's what I, that's the reason why I love listening to podcasts is just mm -hmm. to hear people's stories right, right. Right. and get the message within the story Definitely. and how between the lines. Yeah. Read between the lines and be able to see how, you know, certain things that they may say during the, uh, during the interview of the podcast that I'm able to take away certain right. things and apply it to what I'm doing. Right. You know, uh, you know, so I, I think it's just a very, um, just a, a way, a great way to impact people. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. man, I, I commend y'all for what y'all doing. Like, I've seen mm. the growth. I've been able to see the, yeah, see, see the growth, yeah. man, from yeah, even yeah. from when y'all came to the house. Like, yeah. that was about what? Uh, Almost three years ago. Wow, was that Dang. long? 2018, 2019, no, two, two years ago. About two years oh, ago? Yeah, two oh, years ago. Wow. So even in, in 28, from 2018, just to see like y'all's following grow and y'all mm. be able to connect to the whole producer community yeah. in the industry, not yeah. just any producers, but you guys have really found a, 
uh, a niche, a, a niche of being able to connect mm, with people. I think that's, mm. that's 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 amazing. Thank you. And it's so fire. Like when you came in, you're like, yeah, man, I was just watching the Tomb episode. I seen this episode. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. that's so fire. <laughs> us to know Bro, it's like, like what y'all really like? Right. Hey, yeah, because you, really you don't you don't know who's who's right. looking and listening. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. you know you can you can only um, you know we can only be able to know so much, but, right. you know, we can't see everything. Yeah. Right. And that's the same thing that, you know, even producers should take that same approach with, with, um, with, uh, on, on, uh, with, cre- with the creation and the, 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 the mm-hmm. grind process mm-hmm. is like, just because things are not happening, don't happening doesn't mean that things right. are not happening. Right. Yeah. Just because right. we can't see things happening doesn't mean that things are not happening. Right. Mm-hmm. It's just like, as long as you're continuing to, to put the work in, you know, things are things are are, are taking place and things are formed. You don't know who's talking, who right. wh- who's talking about you in certain studios. Right, right. right. You know, and you could just be all of you. You were literally a um, text message or phone call away from your next big break. Wait, Everybody, yeah, come is. on now. Right. <laughs> you could have twenty five plays on Spotify or on SoundCloud, but right. you don't know who that you twenty don't know five who that 25 is. is. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so my, pa- my pastor always says something. He says you always just trust God even when you can't trace even him. Even when you can't oh, trace him, and I was like. Man, just like when you said the 25 thing, you don't know who is listening. You don't know to who's Ron listening, Fest. man. And all it takes is that one. Right. You know, with me, it was that that one text from Ron Fest. Right. And I had no idea. I'm sitting here focused on these three other major artists and mm-hmm. and God is already working this to where they Blessing him, like, him, right him, the him and Kanye in, in the studio already recording. Yes. And I'm focused on this, not even knowing. Right. You know, so, you know, you got to kind of approach things like that. And that, that gives you hope, too, because yeah. it's like just because I can't see it don't mean it's not happening or it's yeah, not yeah. going to happen. Have mm-hmm. that faith. Have that Trust faith. It when you can't trace yeah. it. Dope, man. Dope conversation, man. Where can, where can everyone follow you if they don't follow yeah, you Yeah, follow me at uh, Symbolic One uh, on all socials. That's uh, uh, S-Y-M-B-O-L-Y-C. O N E. Yeah. Yeah, follow me. And I, I look forward to connecting with with more producers mm-hmm. and, and not even producers, man. Just just anybody. I, I just I just love just good energy, good positive energy and being able to to have great conversations with people and connect with people. Yeah. Yes, sir, man. Everybody make sure y'all go pick this up. Yeah. I'm about, yeah, halfway, go get that about thing. halfway through it. It's do... definitely inspiring. <laughs> about you... definitely inspiring, man. Oh yeah. Do you want to do a giveaway, maybe like give away like two copies? Um, mm-hmm. how about like if everyone at home leave a timestamp of your favorite moment your favorite gem mm. that you picked up from this podcast and then you know we'll, we'll sift through the comments and then we'll, we'll That's get you a signed com- get get mm. two people a signed copy or something like that I love it yeah Ooh. let's do that All right, hey, cool. turn up yeah. let's get it so right. pay attention man oh, we'll have all the info in the description we'll have a link you can go grab a copy if you can't wait mm. um, to see if you want or not um, <laughs> definitely, definitely go pick that thing up yeah, yeah. definitely grab it man <laughs> especially like if you're a producer even if you don't like books if, if you like books you should 100% million percent yeah. grab it um, real inspirational if you love you know come up stores and stuff like that so and, it, and it's an easy read too yeah it like, it's like not a too long yeah it's, it's an easy read it's yeah. like it's like 21 yeah. chapters but um, chapters like four pages yeah each. like four or five pages 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 each mm-hmm. and um, and each chapter is like a specific story right you oh. know it's a specific story and I, I made sure that I highlighted the process uh, more than the achievement mm-hmm. right. you know I wanted mm-hmm. to highlight the process of getting to the achievement you know so there's a lot of inspiration and encouragement within the 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 storytelling and the process of of getting to that that success. Yeah, and I love how each chapter ends with a reflective, reflective moment. moment. Man, yeah. That's reinforces yeah, the, yeah it. the the reflective moment that actually yeah. didn't come until like 70 maybe 70 80% of me writing the book mm. and I was like how can I add more value to, to, the, to the reader? It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So I, I came up with the reflective moment. Yeah. And the and basically reflective moment is just me being able to connect the the story and the experience with the message right? and right. just giving my insight and my bird's eye view on the whole situation. Fire, man. Yeah. Well, shoot, man, we appreciate it one more time, man. Man, appreciate you guys having me, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> Go get it, y'all. Go grab Pray it right focus, now. Focus, plan, yes, execute. Sir. Another dope episode in the books, man. Signing up. Peace, yeah. y'all.